Hi my besties. Hopefully this video is a lot quieter than my book review one. The AC is off, so hopefully that's not loud. And New York's being a little quiet today, so. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a film that unless you're a film geek like me, you probably have never heard of. So the film that I will be discussing and basically ranting about today is a 2002 French film by the director Gaspar Noé entitled Irreversible. I tried to learn how to pronounce it in French properly and I'm gonna try, okay? Irreversible? Anyone that speaks French, let me know how you did. I probably butchered it. I took French for one semester and I was horrible at it. So, so I'm gonna be calling it Irreversible throughout today. All right. So the reason why I want to talk about this film is because for years I had heard so much about it. I had always heard people say, oh, it's so graphic. It's so brutal, but so good, so deep. And I knew it was told in the reverse chronological order, which I'll explain. So I was definitely intrigued to it by that. And then over summer break, I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch it. <sighs> and I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it. So I want to talk about it. Let me give you a basic plot summary if you have never heard of Irreversible. The main plot of it is basically that a woman named Alex is brutally, brutally assaulted. And the film is basically the story of her boyfriend and then ex-boyfriend getting revenge slash trying to figure out who was the assailant. Now, what makes Irreversible unique is that it is told in a reverse chronological order timeline. So the first like opening thing you see of the film is actually the credits and it ends with like the title card. So each scene, there's only 10 scenes total in the film. Each scene is like 10 minutes non-stop, no cuts, and then it cuts to the scene that chronologically came right before it. So like the first half of the film is basically the aftermath of the assault and her boyfriend and ex-boyfriend trying to seek vengeance slash figure out who did it and then we see the assault and then after that for the latter half of the film is basically just like a prelude to it the whole story takes place over one day not even first things first i want to get into what i did like about the film number one is the cinematography the camera work in this is so beautiful it's so well done basically after each scene is done the camera turns counterclockwise to show reverse i'm gonna see if i can include a clip. And I do think that was super well done and in general just the camera work in this is really good and the lighting that they use for scenes especially during the assault scene is so good like the shot of her walking down the passageway so so beautiful next is the acting i mean i don't have anything really crazy to say about it it's just really good like vincent castle is super talented and monica bellucci as well did fantastic again that's kind of it <laughs> like i just wanted to point out the acting was really good and the music is probably my favorite part of this and I think the coolest part. So Gaspar Noé's intention with the music for this and the soundtrack and the score was to use low frequency sounds. So that way it makes the audience feel physically nauseous and unwell the whole time. And he definitely accomplished that because I mean, truth be told, there really was only one part of the film that I felt used music really at all. And it was during the opening scene where <laughs> It's gonna sound so weird explaining it, but basically they track down their the assailant to a weird underground BDSM gay club in Paris, <laughs> and it's called Rectum. That was like the only funny part of the film I thought it was called Rectum. They're basically for like 10 straight minutes are just going through this weird club trying to find the assailant and the camera will do like flashes and it's like there's a lot of nudity and violence in this so imagine that no cuts graphic violence and nudity and then just this is the music you hear in the background watching that scene and like feeling uneasy and I felt scared. That's pretty much all the stuff that I liked about Irreversible. Now I want to get into what I didn't like about it, which is going to be the main 
parts of this video. Number one, I want to talk about the timeline. So like I said, this film uses a reverse chronological timeline. What I will say about the timeline and the context of this film, it felt very unnecessary. It didn't work well with this story. With Irreversible, it definitely felt like an add-on, not really like the main point of the story, I guess. So let me explain why. So when I was watching the film, I kept expecting like the main thing of why it was reverse chronological order is that at the end we would figure out her assailant was like someone she knew or somehow someone close to her and so it would be more crazy when we figure out. Really nothing I feel like came from this use of the timeline. And it's clear that Noe's intention was for there to be this huge theme about time and how time ruins everything, which he literally states at the end of the film. It says a title card that says time ruins everything. But after watching it, there's really no reason to say that. Like, it's not justified with the plot. Like, it just, it made no sense to use the timeline. It's the only way I can explain it. And I think you have to kind of just watch it to get what I'm saying with this. Like, how did it ruin everything? And that goes into my next thing, which whenever I would hear people talk about this film, mention it, they would always say, like I said in the beginning of this, oh, it's so brutal, so graphic, but so deep, you know? But after watching it, it didn't feel deep at all. Like, it felt like there was no themes to it, which I would have no issue with. Like, I said this in my book review video, but I feel like a lot of media, like our movies, TV, books, they try to be too deep. And some of the best pieces of media are just simple stories. Stories. But with this film, it's so clear that he was trying to be deep and have this whole theme to it, but it just was simply not there. <laughs> Don't think this movie is deep whatsoever. It's just a simple story, which again, I have no problem with, but it's just watching it, it was frustrating because you can tell that because it was just so pretentious with the timeline and stuff, it just very much came off as a very pointless film, both with using the timeline and with the message of the film. It just was like, what? That made no sense, dude. <laughs> All right, now I wanna get into the um, real tea with this, okay? So I wanna put a viewer discretion for the next however long. Uh, there will be talks of violence and essay, so if you don't wanna hear that. So let's talk about the nudity in this film first. There's a lot of nudity. Not a crazy amount, actually. Not as much as one episode of Game of Thrones, but there was enough to where I was like, okay, this is unnecessary. And my thing with nudity is, one, I do, like, I'm totally body posy. like, you want to be naked, be naked, you know, the human body's the human body. But I will say when it comes to film and TV, there's definitely, it always feels like people put in nudity just to be shocking and grab your attention. It felt the same way with this film. There were only really, like, three scenes with graphic nudity. The big assault scene actually doesn't have really any nudity, so I appreciate it for that. But the first one I want to talk about the most because this is where I was like okay this film is just trying to be exploitative like I mentioned earlier how they were in the weird BDSM club basically the whole scene is them is the camera showing them going throughout the club trying to find the assailant and the camera would always like be spinning and so then it would like come down and you would see someone naked and then it'd go up and you'd see them trying to find them and then it'd be someone nude again and I get they were in a BDSM club and stuff but again it was like it just felt kind of pointless and like it was just an attention grabber and then later in the movie after the big assault scene there's also a random intimate scene between the two main characters and also has a ton of nudity and it again just felt pointless like again i have no problems with nudity or intimacy on camera it's just it's for me it's got to make sense with the plot and the characters and it just does not in this film really ever except for one place which I will get to next. So next I want to talk about the physical violence in this movie. So I will give it this. It's not a there's not a ton of violence in this. There's really only three scenes of violence in the whole film and only two of them are like just physical violence. The other one is the assault scene which I'll be talking about next. But the physical violence scenes I feel the same way with the nudity scenes. They just felt 
unnecessary and just felt like they were there to be shocking and graphic. There really was no point to it. It was clear it was just there to shock. So next I want to get into the big essay scene, which is probably the thing the film is most known for is because of how brutally graphic and realistic this violent scene is. Number one, I want to say this scene was from an actor's perspective and from a fellow film person. This scene was very, very well done. Like the acting, the choreography, the camera work, for what it was trying to do, it was very well done. And yes, it was brutally graphic and literally just horrible to watch. And I've seen my fair share of violent media, you know, as a film person, it's just stuff you come across. And this was like one of the first and only times where I've felt queasy and been like, I think I can't finish this. Like it was just so realistic. It was a very well executed scene. And I think actually the reason why I thought this scene was really good was actually because the actress who's playing the girl that's getting assaulted, she actually basically directed the whole scene and choreographed it. And so I think that's why it was so good. But my problem with the scene in the context of the film because I really did like this scene in terms of what it was trying to do which was to be a real graphic portrayal of as violence but my problem with it is how I felt with the nudity and the violence which was that it just felt like it was there to shock. It didn't serve the plot well. Here's an example of how I think a scene like this could be used to help a film with its plot or make it or elevate it. If the whole film was the story of how she was assaulted and shows maybe her process of trying to move on, her PTSD or whatever things she's dealing with after it and the whole plot is her life after it and then maybe it's trying to show like everyone's saying it's not a big deal get over it get over it or trying to rush her to be okay and then we see this that's where it can be effective and can be a necessity to a film and elevate it. With this, the actual assault is only half of the film, meaning like after it happens, because it's in a reverse chronological order, we don't ever hear about it again because it hasn't happened yet. So the first half of the film, we don't even see her. It's just her boyfriend and ex-boyfriend trying to get vengeance for it. And then we see the actual scene and that's it. So it just felt very unnecessary and it felt like it was graphic for the reason just to shock, not to make a statement about s violence or anything like that so yeah my feelings about that scene are it's really good but just in the context of this film it was exploitative and kind of not a necessity Whew. okay so those were pretty much all my thoughts about irreversible so the overall review i'd give it if i were to sum up this whole video would be that it had potential and i think there could have been something to it with this reverse timeline and if they wanted to make it a whole film about intimacy violence but it was too graphic and too violent for what it ended up being and it's not really a deep film i think the timeline doesn't work for it yeah i just felt like this whole movie was kind of pointless it sucks because the cast is super talented gaspar noe can do so much better i think he has done better do i recommend you watch this film I always say form your own opinion. You may watch this and think it is deep and stuff. I don't see how, but you may. But of course, viewer discretion advised for it. And finally, I give this film a rating of two out of five stars, just cause it was kind of pointless and stupid and graphic for no reason. But there were some good parts to it. Like I said, the music, cinematography, the acting. So those were my thoughts about the film. Wait, I'm gonna try and finish it by saying it in French. I'm literally French, like I have French ancestry. This is sad. <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting through this rant. I hope I was able to be coherent and make sense. I just felt like this needed to be discussed in my opinion because there's often only one type of narrative that gets talked about with this film and so I think it's definitely important. Please let me know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching this and I will see you in the next one. Bye my besties!